Hey guys, it's Camille from Chicken Scratch and Snap. Today we're going to go over Alma chapters 23 through 29. These are probably what you think of first as the anti-Nephi-Lehi chapters, but Alma 26 is a great chapter about rejoicing, Ammon rejoicing, about their mission, and then chapters 29 is Alma um, wishing that he was an angel. So great chapters, as always. The scriptures are wonderful, and this is no exception. The scriptures are great. So first, let's talk about the anti-Nephi Lehi's. So one of the huge lessons that we learn from the Book of Mormon and is continually taught to us is how the gospel is for everyone. Um, I love that Alma is teaching in the Nephite land and he is the one to teach a lot of the, these people. And then the sons of Mosiah are in the Lamanite land and they get to teach a lot of these people who we would think would never convert to the gospel. But these are the ones that are, end up being the strongest people in the gospel. These anti-Nephi-Lehi's never fall away. And it's great to compare it to Alma 26. <coughs> Excuse me. If you go to Alma 26 verses 23 through 25, the Nephites kind of tell the sons of Mosiah why they don't want them to go. And, uh, you know, it's stupid to go. They're just going to kill you. We should just get rid of the Lamanites. Just don't do it, right? And how this is such a great lesson in how we can't judge who's ready for the gospel and who's not. Um, that's up to the Lord and up to them. So we should just share the gospel with everybody, right? Okay. You can also look through Emma chapter 23. In Amos chapter 24, specifically verses 6 through 27, and look for evidences of how you know the anti-Nephites have been fully converted and have fully repented. Okay, now anti-Nephites, we know they buried their weapons of war. This is such a great example to us because they didn't just say, "Okay, we're going to stop doing that." They did, <laughs> but that's not the only thing they said. They said, okay, we're going to stop doing this. Therefore, we're going to take our weapons, our temptation to do this thing and bury them deep into the earth. Let's get rid of those temptations very far away so it's not even going to be a problem anymore. We should definitely be doing this. Sometimes we torture ourselves by leaving that temptation around, like we're afraid to let it go and we don't really want to do it anyway. So we need to just clean those things out of our lives. So you can do that with your family. You can talk about some of the things that you guys want to improve upon and repent of and how to get rid of those temptations. Um, or you can just do it individually and encourage your family to do it individually. You could go through your watch lists. You could go through your playlists, um, clean those out. Uh, making sure that it's just things that are going to uplift you and not be a temptation. Um, it could be cleaning up your room um, so that it's a positive place to be and you feel better about yourself um, and then you're not going to be as argumentative or something. You know, like there's things that you can do to remove temptations, right? So go through and figure that out. And then let's do a burying activity because of course you have to do something fun, right? So you could do this um, with like flowers or whatever and um, just bury like newspapers or something that's gonna um, be biodegradable and then put the flowers and stuff on top of it. Or you can go the food route. So um, they have these plastic swords, you know those toothpicks that are plastic swords that are so much fun. <laughs> I'm so excited to get ours. I ordered ours, but they haven't been, haven't come here yet. So um, you could take those plastic swords and then you could put them in the bottom of a cup. And then you could fill that cup up with like chocolate pudding because that would represent dirt, right? And then you could crush some Oreos on top. These are great because they're so small, they'll easily crumble. Um, and kind of talk about how that represents bearing those temptations in um, getting rid of the, all of that and starting new and starting clean and being fully converted to Jesus Christ, right? So you could kind of break this up. Um, one day you can study that chapter and then, you know, and briefly discuss it with your family. And then the next day you can make this snack and then you can eat the snack as you watch one of the Book of Mormon videos about this story um, and kind of reinforce it that way. Remember, repetition is a great thing. That's how the Lord teaches us and it's a great way to teach our families as well. 
Um, one of the things to note with the plastic swords, I put a link on the blog. So remember, cknscratch.com, and then you click on the Book of Mormon tab, and that's where you find all the Come Follow Me lesson helps. Um, so I put a link for those plastic swords, but the one that I bought are like 2,000 of them. Nice, <laughs> because it was like, anyway, it just makes more sense to buy the 2000. So you can use those swords again as we move up onto the war chapters. I'm sure you can think of ways to use them. And then you could also use them this 4th of July weekend though, or July 1st for Canadians, right? Um, and talk about freedoms. I have a great title of Liberty Family Night that ties into Independence Day with free printables. I put the link on the blog as well. So go print that out and you can do that um, for your Independence Day. Um, and tie that all in. I know we're not talking about the title of Liberty for another little while, but it's a great just a thing that you can do this week as well. Okay, so let's move on. Um, another great topic for this week is talking about religious freedom. I know I bring this up a lot, but it's such an important topic. Um, we didn't always have it, and not everybody has it today, and it's so good to fight for a religious freedom, and right now is such a good time to talk about it. Um, in chapter 23, the Lamanites are given religious freedom. Um, the king, King Lamoni's dad was converted, remember, last week? And so this week he grants freedom. And so, yeah, they still face these hardships, um, but they, it would be illegal to put these missionaries into jail at this point, okay? And so tie this into Elder David A. Bednar's recent um, address at the Religious Freedom Annual Review. This was shared on social media. Um, you can. I have the link for it on the blog as well that you can go, and it's this whole like hour long thing. But if you jump ahead to 32 minutes, that's Elder Bednar speaking, and you can just read the article too, where it kind of sums up his points. It's just so good for right now of what we're going through, at least in the United States. I'm assuming that it happens in more than just our place, right? Um, where um, churches have been shut down, right, because of COVID. And those religious freedoms are being stepped upon right now, right? Um, <laughs> where it's okay to gather for something else, but it's not okay to gather for a religious ceremony. Or it's okay for um, to go fill up with gas or to go to the grocery store, but it's not okay to go and administer to a dying man um, to have his priest with him as he passes away. I mean, that's a problem, right? And those freedoms, we can't take lightly. We have to fight for those freedoms to be able to worship how we want and when we want and to be able to gather together um, to do so. Obviously, we want to be careful. Obviously, we don't want everybody dying. Um, but the balance there, and Elder Bednar addresses that so beautifully. I definitely recommend going and listening to that or at least reading the article if your family is old enough. Um, but just personal study if you can. Do that and, and talk about how important religious freedom is, what it means, um, what we can do to support it, and what you're willing to do, how you're willing to fight for it. Again, you can definitely tie that back into the title of Liberty 4th of July lesson um, for this weekend as well um, by talking about other freedoms as well. Okay, <laughs> that's a big one. Okay, so here um, is another point with religious freedom. Um, the anti-Nephi Lehi's, we love them. They're great people. Um, they've buried their weapons, so now they're vulnerable, right? And so the Lamanites get angry, and they take advantage of, uh, and they attack the anti-Nephi Lehi's. The anti-Nephi Lehi's don't fight back. They just kneel on the ground, and they're slaughtered. Like, well, at least a thousand of them are slaughtered. And then the Lamanites, the good thing is some of the Lamanites are then converted after seeing that. It's still a really sad thing though, right? Um, and so then those Lamanites, they go and attack Ammonihah and destroy that city. And then they want to go and destroy more of the Nephite lands, but they realize soon that they can't. And so the Lamanites come back and they're angry again. And I always think of the story as like a one-time thing, you know, those thousand people died and then it's done, but it happens again, you guys. <laughs> they go and they stir up in the anger against the anti-Nephi-Lehi's, and they go and attack them again. And of course, they're not going to fight it back again. And so more people die. And 
this is when Ammon is like, okay, this is enough already, right? We need to get these people to safety. And the king, which is kind of cool, his, they changed his name to Anti-Nephi Lehi as well. And um, he's like, but I don't want to leave. And the Nephites won't take us back. Um, we've been so mean. How are they going to, I mean, let's, we'd rather be slaves to them, you know, to make up for it. Anyway, so um, the Lord says it's okay to go. And so they do. Um, and I love that Alma has prepared the, the Nephites through his mission while um, the sons of Mosiah are, are serving in the Lamanite territory so that the Nephites are willing to take these people in and protect them. So they give them the land of Jershon, which means strangers, and they give them this land and they, are, they protect them. It, and so that's such a great example, right? And what are we willing to do to perfect to protect the religious freedoms of others um, and other freedoms for others. What are we willing to do? Great thing to think about and to talk about as a family. Now, <laughs> moving on, I, I call this part the pits of despair and real joy, okay? So remember how you have to have opposites. So you have to have this horrible opposite of despair to incredible joy, right? In order to appreciate both. And so one of the things that happens is Ammon and, you know, the sons of Mosiah and their companions, they experience a lot of hardships. Uh, they've been imprisoned, they've been beaten, they've been stoned, they've been spat upon, you know, just lots of things. They've gone hungry, things like that. Um, but they have incredible joy as well. So, well, okay, so before we get to the joy part, they, at one point in the scriptures, it says in Alma 26, 27, um, that they were about to turn away. So they're about to give up, basically. But then the Lord comforts them and keeps them going. And so what do we do when we reach that pit of despair? Do we give up? Or do we continue on and figure out how to get over that? And, and that's the key, right? So in this case, the sons of Mosiah, they've been comforted through the Lord, and that's how they got over there. So how do we get over ours? I think we all experience that, right? There's always this time in our life where it's like, oh my goodness, enough already. I just I can't do it anymore. Um, but how do we keep going? How do we keep striving for the good, the righteous desires that we have? Um, so you can do this activity with your family, is grabbing some popsicle sticks and making a bridge. So you can make a pit of despair just out of a bowl, like a big bowl that you have, and then challenge your family to build a bridge. And um, you can look up tutorials for this if you want to, ways for tips on how to build a bridge, or they could just try it. Um, but they have to successfully build a bridge across this pit and then let a car drive over it. So how do they do that? And there's a lot of symbolism that you can tie in with these things. Um, as you build and as they use their hands, hopefully they're thinking in new ways and um, thinking of those things. And, and when you drive your car over, does the bridge collapse or does it stay strong? Do they have to try again? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, who can you turn to when you reach your pit of despair? Uh, what can you do when you get there? What can help you not give up? Um, talk about those things because on the other side of that pit of despair, you could put this amazing prize. It could be the Oreos again. Um, something that shows them on the other side is this amazing joy of reward, right? Um, in Alma 26 and Alma 29, they're great chapters that talk about joy. Incredible joy. Joy that swallows up the pain and the sorrow and despair that happened in those times. I like to compare it to a woman giving birth. Um, it's painful, <laughs> it's not fun, but oh, we choose to do it again. I mean, I had five kids, I did it five times. Am I crazy or what, right? But it's because the joy that you get from having that child at the end, it swallows up all of that pain that we just went through and that we're willing to do it again. Um, so imagine this joy, it doesn't, um, erase that pain but it's just so much more that that pain just doesn't even relate anymore um I, I love also that Ammon passes out his joy just overwhelms him he passes out and it's so funny because we think of Ammon as this 
strong dude, right? But he just collapses from the joy. And that's what missionary work can do. The joy of missionary work is is amazing. It's not like the other joys and happiness that we have. It It's more. And bringing the, um, the sons of Mosiah wanted to just bring a few souls, a few of the Lamanites to the gospel. And they ended up having this enormous success because of the Lord Jesus Christ helping them. And can you just imagine? I can't even fathom that kind of joy. And it's just amazing. So talk about that joy. Um, I have a color by number sheet. It's the same one we used last year in the New Testament, but you can use it here. And there's five different colors. And so under each one of the colors, write something that relates to, to joy that you have, whether that's sharing the gospel with your neighbor, doing service, reading the scriptures, whatever, what brings you joy and write those things under those five colors and then go ahead and color that thing in um, and hang that up and just remember what brings you joy and how we should have those righteous desires and seek after those things, but understand that we're going to hit obstacles and trials along the way. That just makes us appreciate the joy so much more. Okay, last thing. We're going to talk about Mormon. Okay, remember, he's the one that's abridging this book, and so he inserts little things every now and then. Um, and that's why we have that. Well, so at the end of Alma 28, there's two verses at the very end that is Mormon saying, and thus we see. So we made a spyglass. You can print these off or just, you know, use whatever paper you have. Um, and then there's these strips that say, and thus we see. So on this strip, you're going to write down or draw whatever you want. Um, things you have seen as you've studied the Book of Mormon this year that maybe you haven't seen before or things that you're learning again. Um, whatever is strengthening your testimony this year on this on these strips. So piss, pass out a strip to every person in your family. They can fill these out and just keep them for themselves. Or the fun thing to do is to pass your strips around and see what everybody's learning. Is it the same? Is it different? What is one thing that's different from everybody else's? You know, and just everybody gets to look through their strip and kind of see um, what is being taught and what, what your family's learning. It's a great kind of um, part to review and to see what your family, um, how your family is learning and what they're focusing on. All right. I hope that helps. I'll put these ideas on the blog again, cknscratch.com, Book of Mormon tab, and then go to the lesson that you want. This is Alma 23 through 29. You guys have a great week. I'll share more as I can through our newsletters and our social media channels as well. See you next week.